Rationally speaking, it would make sense that the more of something you have, maybe the more inclined you would be to share it with other people. But that's not what our research and what a lot of other research seems to find. We brought strangers into the lab in pairs of two, with the flip of a coin determined who was going to be a rich player and who was going to be the poor player. The rich player got two times as much money to play the game. They got to roll both dice instead of one, so they got to move around the board a lot quicker. And that mattered because when they moved around the board and passed go, they would collect $200, whereas the poor person, well, they'd collect $100. In the inequalities almost immediately apparent to the players. How couldn't it be? But within a couple of minutes, dynamics start to crystallize. How many 500s did you have? Just one. Are you serious? Yeah. I have three. <laughs> and the rich player started to behave a little differently. Rich players become more dominant. Rich players eat more pretzels. When moving their piece around the board, they become louder. They start smacking the board with their piece. I'm gonna buy out this whole board. And the rich players were significantly ruder. You don't have enough money to hope. They were far more likely to showcase and talk about how well they're doing. Life is sweet for me. And to belittle the plight of those poor players. <laughs> so they became less compassionate. Yes, and I'm buying it. And these are patterns that we're observing consistently over hundreds of different individuals. You're gonna run out of money soon. You see people who are winning because of the flip of a coin start to act as if they actually deserve to win. Looks like I made some good investments. One of the questions we ask is, why did you win the game? And you could imagine that rich players would say, well, I won the game because of that flip of the coin. I had two times the advantage. But none, not one, of the rich players attributed their inevitable success in this game to that force of luck that randomly got them that privileged position in the first place. And when we watch patterns of human interactions, people who feel entitled and deserving of their own success are more willing to privilege their own interests above the interests of other people and often engage in ways that undermine other people's welfare so that they can get ahead. And that's a fairly pernicious social consequence. But it's not about people who are rich but rather that the experience of being relatively better off than someone seems to affect everyone or would affect everyone in the same way. Yes, we won the lottery! Peter, my God, what the hell are you wearing? It's a solid gold tuxedo, Lois. I had to fight three rappers down at the nonsense store for this. Look, Peter, this is not who we are. I'm worried the money is changing this family and not the way you hoped. Well, I was hoping it would make you shut up, so you're right. When we, in experiments, get actually poor people, or we make poor people feel rich, again, the same pattern of results. Lois, don't you understand? We don't got any of our old problems anymore. We don't have to worry about paying bills. We don't have to worry about saving dough. All we got to do is enjoy ourselves. Interested? <sighs> oh, my God. Peter, it's beautiful. Is it a blood diamond? Oh, the bloodiest. The two kids who found it were forced to murder each other. Oh, Peter, I love it. We translate perceptions and experiences of being better off than others materially to being better than others. The mind makes that translation, it seems.